Welcome back to our dot on point quilt along. We are already in week four. Last week we prepared our dots by sewing those squares together. This week it's all about cutting out those circles, then pressing them onto the background fabric and applique them on. Let's start to do that. For the cutting process. If you want to go with your usual tools you have around, maybe you don't own a circle cutter or a rotating cutting mat, you can do so with just a compass and a pair of scissors. So for that you need to know where exactly is the midpoint of this little thing. We have already a guideline through the seam. And when we fold that little thing into half and give it a crease, now we know exactly where the center point is. Now I got a measurement from my pattern, already installed my compass to the right size and I draw a simple circle on with my compass. And I use just a pair of scissors to cut my circle out. As you can see, this is a little bit of a time consuming process. And also, it's hard to get really a smooth curve when you use just your scissors. But that's just a solution if you don't want to invest in new tools or anything like that. I show you in a minute how much more efficient our circle cutter will be. So this is the old school way. You can do that. Now the next thing is my circle cutter. There are various um, tools on the market. So I like this one. I don't know the exact name. I guess it is from, it is from Alpha. You will figure that out. And again, the measurement is written in the pattern. So you need it. Okay, here we go. Let's do the midpoint. I fold it, give it a crease. And now I have this handy rotating cutting mat, which I can turn and turn and turn. If I wouldn't have that, and I would only go with that tool alone, and I would point it like here. So see, now I would have to readjust my fabric once in a while, and two times, three times, four times. It's a solution, but we can really go better. I love those tools and I use them again and again and again. So for more than just one project, it's really worth to invest. So midpoint, pin on, hold it in place and just go along. Hey, how easy was that? You have to make more than hundreds of those circles, so I think it's worth the invest. I think you got the idea. Now when I have prepared a couple of those dots, let me show you how I bring them onto the background fabric. As I mentioned, my background fabric is white on white, so I have to be very careful if the right side is really facing up. I need, again, guidelines, and it's pretty easy to do. I can just fold my background square in half as like that, and I give it a grease, on the outer edges. I don't necessarily have the crease in the middle because it will covered by the dot anyway. So this is how I prepare 
all the background squares. Next, I want to get rid of that backing paper of the fusible web. So it is really sticky and can be glued on. The easiest thing is to use a pin and you give your paper a little scratch like that. And from there, you can just easily break it and then get rid of that thing. Now for the dot, I also need a guidance. I have already the seam line as one of the guidelines and I just fold it in half like that and give it a crease to have a second guideline here too. And now you just place it centered and so the creases are matching congruently and you can press it on. Now, I have prepared all the dots. Well, that's quite a stack, isn't it? We are ready to go to the sewing room and applique them on. When I start to applique my circles, it's a question which thread should I use? I prefer to have a transparent or you say monofilament thread and mine is the branding YLI. I really love it because it is weak like a hair and also thin but you can still iron on it. It takes the heat and because it is so weak if you cut it and it sticks out a little bit of your fabric it doesn't prickle. If you don't like to go with a plastic thread and you want to use cotton thread instead. So the question is which color you should go. For example, if you choose to match one color for your dots, then it wouldn't match with the other ones and would show the contrast. Then you have to decide, do I go with a neutral color or do I re-thread my machine for each dot? That's the question. So that's why I prefer to have a generic thread which matches in each case. So I have threaded my machine already accordingly and for the bobbin I actually used a cotton thread in white and I loosen my other thread tension just a little bit so it doesn't bring up the white thread to the surface. For the stitch I have a buttonhole stitch in this machine. If your machine doesn't have a buttonhole stitch, then you can go easily with a zigzag stitch. I wouldn't recommend to do it set tight, which you would do for a satin stitch, because then the circle will get a little bit too wavy and that doesn't look good. So make it quite more spacey. I have now my buttonhole stitch on, my monofilament thread on, and I start sewing my first circle on. When I'm done with one round, I don't cut the threads because otherwise they easily slip away. So I just lift the needle, go with the next one, and only then I cut the threads. That was quite a lot. I'm nearly done, just those are left over. But I want to stretch my shoulders for a bit. 
have a bite and we'll do those later. So we will see each other next week when we will assemble the quilt top together. Don't forget to post your progress on Instagram and let me see what you are up to so you have a chance to win our weekly prize. See you then. Peace.